Let's bow our heads as we go before the throne of grace and mercy. Most tender and loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to fellowship with one another and to celebrate you, O oh Lord, for you are the reason for the season. Yes. And Father God, as, as we tell the children that Santa Claus is coming to town, first and foremost, Father God, may we tell them about you coming into the world. But Father God, Santa Claus is not real, but you are, Lord, you're real, and you are the one true and living God. Oh Lord, as this global pandemic continue to run rampant, now more than ever, Father God, it's praying time. Mm -hmm. It's praying time, Father God, for your word says that if your people who are called by your name, that's us Christians that put our faith in you and ask you for mercy, Father God, that if we would humble ourselves. And sometimes, Father God, we have to pray and ask for humbleness and not be so haughty. That if, if, if we would humble ourselves and, and pray, mm -hmm. pray, Father God, for one another, Father God. Pray, Father God, for those that were just devastated by the tornado that struck close to home and other places, Father God. People have lost loved ones and have to rebuild their lives, Father God. Father God, we pray for Reverend Goffin, Lord, who yeah. just recently lost his beautiful and sweet angel. Father God, we know that you're with him, Lord. Give him peace, give him strength, and give him and his family comfort, Father God. Father God, we pray for leaders, Father God, mm -hmm. that won't seek power or greed, Father God, but they will want to do right by your people, O oh Lord. Father God, we, we pray for strength for the medical professionals, Father God, who put their lives on the line to work with the sick, Father God. We pray for those, Father God, who have given up their time and their talent and their resources to help those who have been devastated, Father God, by hurricanes or tornadoes, floods, or whatever there may be, Father God. Mm -hmm. Father God, we pray for those that are tuned in and zoomed in and dialed in to this service for you in honor of you, O oh Lord. We need you, Lord. Some need you for one thing, some need you for another, but we need you, Father God. Father God, we pray for our families, we pray for our friends, Father God. Help each and every one of us. And Father God, we pray for Reverend Sherry Miller, who will bring a word of encouragement that is very much needed in this world today, Father God. Father God, we know that if we seek your face, your face, oh God, and that if we repent and ask for forgiveness and turn from our wicked ways, Lord, the world is so wicked, Father. The world is so full of hatred and sometimes can be so cruel, Father God. But if we turn from our wicked ways, we know that your word says that you will hear from your Father in heaven and that you will forgive our sins and that you will heal our land, Father God. Oh, Lord, our land need a healing, Father God. Yes. Your people are suffering, Lord. We need healing from sicknesses in our bodies, Father God. Father God, we need financial healing, Lord. Lord God, we definitely spiritual healing. Father God, some need healing from emotional and psychological scars, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, the land, please heal our land from corona. Oh, Lord. It's praying time. Mm -hmm. But Father God, in times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Mm -hmm. An anchor that holds and grips the solid rock. That rock is you, Lord. Yes. You're the solid rock. Yes. yes, you are, Lord. There's no holes in you. 
There are no cracks in you. Mm. You're not shaky or unsteady, Lord, but you are a firm, a firm foundation, Father God. Yes, you are. And Father God, as we live this life and we're going to have struggles and we're going to have problems, but if we're anchored in you, Lord, we know everything's going to be all right. Yeah. Father God, when it comes time for us to take our last breath in these mortal bodies, Father God, if we're anchored in you, mm. everything is going to be all right. Yeah. It's praying time, Lord. Yes, it is for, oh Lord, you are all powerful. Lord, you are. You are in control. I know, Lord, you are. You are the solution to all our problems. It's praying time, Father God, for being anchored in you. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Being anchored in you, Father God, you are the reason. Yes, you are for all seasons, Father God. Father God, we love you. We love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us more. This prayer I pray in the mighty, sweet, holy, precious name of Jesus, your son and our Lord and Savior. Amen. Scripture will come from the book of Luke, the second chapter, beginning with the first and reading through the seventh verse. And it reads as following. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree a census should be that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. The word of God for the believers of God, bless be the word. Dear Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we come to you this Christmas Eve with thankful hearts. We praise you for the gift of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Welcome, Lord Jesus. The story of Christ's birth never gets old. We savor the beautiful scriptures. We remember how the Messiah, Messiah arrived as a baby in Bethlehem. We sing songs to echo the joy of the angels. Glory to the newborn King. We know that Christ was born into a world darkened by sin and injustice. In our world today, people are still suffering. Even in this season of bright lights and joyful songs, we cannot forget that there are people in pain because of poverty, hunger, and disaster. Our world is broken, O oh Lord. Like the angels, we have good news to share. Jesus Christ is here to change our stories of hardship and testimonies of hope. Thank you, Emmanuel, God with us. Guide us, Messiah, so we can bear witness to your mercy and love. Equip us to support each other so that more people can have enough food, good health, fruitful work, and greater justice. May we demonstrate your grace. We are deeply grateful that Jesus can change our stories so we can be free from sin and gain eternal life. We rejoice in all the great things God has done for us. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in, in the, the highest heaven, heaven and, and on earth, earth peace, peace to those on whom his, his favor rests. Amen. 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 This time we will have our musical selection. This one is for people of my favorites.
also to our presiding elder, uh, Pastor Reverend Troy Thomas, and to Dr. Maxine, uh, our presiding elder of the Kentucky Conference, and our very fine first lady, Dr. Maxine, and to Reverend Karen Carter, who is the president of the Greater, Greater Louisville Ministerial Fellowship, and to Reverend June Dorsey and the host church, Graph Avenue AME Church. Let the church say amen. This is not a sermon tonight, it's simply words of encouragement. And Reverend Carter has already read the scripture, and I am not going to reread it, but just at your uh, convenient time, go back and read that whole story of the birth of Christ in the gospel according to St. Matthew. I want to, I have been asked to do meditations of encouragement. And so the word encouragement means the action of giving someone support, confidence, and hope, or to persuade them to do something or continue to do something. We should all be encouraging others to continue in their faith, no matter how hard things might get in life. Since the beginning of Advent, we have been blessed and encouraged by messages of hope, peace, joy, and love. In worship services all over the world, the candle of, of hope, peace, joy, and love have been lit to remind us of how Christ will redeem us through his love, through his birth, and give us hope, peace, love, and joy. And today, I want you to remember this theme. Keep the candles burning. Keep the candles burning. Keep the candle of hope burning in your heart. Is your heart filled with hope today? Do you have a confidence, confident expectation of your tomorrow, of your today and your future? based on the promises that the Lord has made to us in his word? Do you have hope in your current dilemmas that the Savior will work it out for your good? That while we're trying to figure it out, the Lord is already working it out. What happens with you when the road ahead is filled with loss? Not only the road ahead, but the road behind you current road and the road ahead of you is filled with loss, stress, and everything seems to weigh you down. Luke gives us a beautiful narrative about the birth of Christ. Even though we know that the story tells us that there was no room for Mary and Joseph at the end, I made a conscious decision not to get caught up in that end because that's not the gist of the story. Our hope is focused on what up sometimes is focused on what others can do for us. And we miss, hallelujah, the blessings that God has already created for us, what he's doing for us right now, and what he plans to do for us in the future. But the Bible says that, that very, says very little about the, this rejection of Mary and Joseph at the end narrative because God had another plan. God had a bigger picture. God had a plan for the birth of Christ that he would not be allowed to be interrupted simply because they were rejected at an end. Have you ever been rejected in your life? Have you ever been turned down and turned away? Today, I want you to light that candle of hope in your heart, knowing that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So I want you today to leave here with a candle of hope burning in your heart. No matter how bad things might get in your life, light that candle of hope. No matter how many people turn you down, light that candle of hope. No matter how many times a supervisor yells at you at work, light that candle of hope in your heart and let that candle not only burn at Christmas time, but let it burn every day. 
And then God gave us the candle of peace, which is a gift. Keep the candle of peace burning in your heart. We know, and my sister prayed about it, that events in the past weeks and years have seemingly robbed not only us in the AME church locally, but internationally has robbed us of our sense of peace. Tornadoes, death have literally destroyed uh, various properties and, and, and level towns in Kentucky. But I heard some of the folk on TV saying, I still got peace and I yeah. still got joy. Because our peace should not rest in material things, but our hope shall lie solely that one day a baby was born in a manger, rejected at the end, but he came here to give us hope and to give us peace. And then that third candle of joy, light that candle in your heart right now. Take up the match of faith and light that candle right now. We can experience joy when we give our burdens over to baby Jesus. Joy unspeakable and yeah. full of glory. Yeah. And then there's the fourth candle, the candle of love. Share the love even when you don't want to. Share yeah. the love when you don't feel like it. Share the love with people who don't like you. Share yeah. the love with people who don't recognize you. Share the love with people who have talked evil about you. Share the love of Christ with everybody you know and everywhere you go. And watch the God of our salvation yes, open yes, doors yes. for you that no man yes. can close. Yes. If a door closes, a Holy Spirit will open up a window. And if that window is locked, God will knock a hole in the roof to Ooh, get that God. blessing yes. to you. So I want you right now to light the candle of love in your heart. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who has who have misused you. Light the candle of love in your heart tonight. And as I close, extending Christ's love to others is the true mark of a Christian. Yes. As we celebrate Christmas today, tomorrow, remember that Jesus is the reason for the season, born of a virgin, laid in a manger, and the world through him has been redeemed from the power of sin and death. Isaiah said he's a mighty counselor, a wonderful yeah. savior, an yeah. everlasting father, the prince of peace, and the yeah. government shall be up on his shoulder. So don't get up every morning watching CBS and NBC worrying about what they're saying because the government is up on God's shoulder. <laughs> I declare when the hand of God moved in COVID-19, COVID-19 is going to have to step back. When God, yeah. the hand of God moved to rebuild and may feel, yeah. the hand of destruction is going to have to step back. Yeah. Because remember, that baby grew up, went to a cross, hung there, went to the grave, stayed three yeah. long days, but early Sunday morning. I don't know what your Bible says, but my Bible <laughs> says he got up with all power yeah. in his hand. Yeah. So I'm going to yeah. light my candle tonight. Come yeah. what may and come what go. Yeah. I'm going to light the yeah. candle Pretty in my it. heart. I came by to encourage you today yeah. to hold on to God's unchanging hand and don't let go. And when you feel like giving up, remember to light the candle of joy. Remember to light that candle of peace. Remember to light that candle of joy. And most of all, most importantly, light the candle of love. God bless you. And may he continue to richly bless you. We are here. We thank you for keeping our families, our loved ones, our uh, members, God. And we just thank you for strength, God, as we finish out um, the year of 2021. And Lord, we just ask that you comfort those who are still grieving the loss of loved ones, God. And we just thank you for what you have planned for us ahead. And Lord, as we keep our candles lit, Lord, may we remember that this season is all about you. Help us not to forget about you, Lord. 
And we thank you as we continue to spread encouragement to others, God, that we can still build up other people in our in their faith, God, as we go through, Lord. Let us be able to encourage and uplift one another, God, as we go about this season. And we just thank you for what you have in store for us for 2022. We call 2022 blessed and highly favored, that it will be a blessed year, a good year um, for all of us, Lord, for our families, friends, church members, and everyone that we know. And we just thank you for allowing us to gather today um, through Zoom, Lord, that we're able to worship you and praise you even um, virtually, God. So we just thank you for that, God. We thank you for that for keeping roofs over our head and food um, on our tables, God, and clothes on our backs. And we just give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.